This is part five, Bronze Lehigh River Valley, West Easton and Glendon. In this aerial, we're looking directly west up the Lehigh in 1982. The industrial area is at right. Both new and old Glendon bridges and chain dam are visible. The smoke in the far distance is from Bethlehem Steel's coke works. Looking south in 1959, the gas tank is next to Jersey Central's main line. The Lehigh Valley Railroad is across the Lehigh River. Looking north over the industrial area in 1961, Lehigh Valley's eastern and northern branch crosses at the top. Different angle in 1962, gone is the gas tank. Lehigh Canal and Lehigh Valley Railroad is at lower right. At upper left is the remains of the Victory Gardens of World War II. Sterling Worth Railway Supply Company in 1900. Note rail cars on the central New Jersey main line in the rear. The Ingersoll plant in 1900. With nowhere to expand, ground was broken for a new plant about five miles east in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. The sprawling Ingersoll plant in 1982 at Phillipsburg. For quite a few years, the company sponsored a classic car show at the Peaberg plant. These were all employees' cars. The Peaberg plant was serviced by the Lackawanna and Central Railroad of New Jersey, who both had spur lines into the plant. One of the bays would contain the shaft section. Shafts were the heart of the pumps. The pump division was the last division to close at Ingersoll in December 2000. Workers a few weeks before all machining stopped. I'm the one at the far left. Today it's just a memory, 2020. Demolished and turned over to what we see as warehouse buildings. How ironic, the original plant in West Easton still stands under a different name, but the newer one is now demolished. Many experiments took place back in the 19-teens with what trains were called oil electrics by many companies, but none were practical. Only the Ingersoll carried ex on experimentations further, and by the mid-twenties came up with a practical design. General Electric supplied the electrical gear, Alco fabricated the truck frames and car bodies, and Ingersoll supplied the heart, the motor, at the Phillipsburg plant. Number 1000 is the first practical internal combustion rail power and can be seen at the B&O Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. It is considered the granddad of all modern diesel electrics on railroads today. Locomotive building was carried on at the Phillipsburg plant till the late 30s when the company turned to rock drills, compressors, mining machinery, and pumps. A Mike's Train House O scale model 91. Pulling a pump shaft and impeller reminds me of the almost 30 years I spent at the Phillipsburg plant. Number 91 is painted in bicentennial colors in 1976. It was six on the production line at the end of the 1920s. This simple illustration shows how fuel oil quickly replaced steam engines if it were not for the Great Depression, they would have replaced steam engines a decade sooner. The Glendon Bridge in 1959, looking north, the Lehigh Canal and Lehigh Railway Railroad is at the bottom. The central New Jersey at the top. No coal cars. The wooded area contained the early furnaces for the anthracite coal. The south side has been closed off for years. It was too narrow for cross traffic. The north side remains open to get to the Canal Museum. In 1900, Glendon had a covered bridge. Part of the furnaces can be seen at right. Looking west from Berwick Street, southeastern, no Lehigh Valley Railroad Bridge until the anthracite plant. 
This structure served as a station and yard offices. Note man with one leg. Railroad accents were common in this time era. Looking south, the little village of Glendon is in the background in 1900. Looking east toward the Glendon Bridge, note the width of the Lehigh Canal. The Black Diamond Express westbound, roaring through Glendon, about 1906. General Electric diesels in 1975 by the Glendon Bridge, just before the Conrail take over. Two Norfolk Southern trains are passing under the south side of the new Glendon Bridge in 2008. Just west of the New Glendon Bridge, the Lehigh Valley enters Lucy's Curve. The photo is from about 1900 and shows what was left of the industrial works looking east. Looking west after 1900 shows the same area. This is now Canal Park and contains a new canal museum built in 2005. An eastbound Lehigh Valley freight train sometime in the 1930s charges east. Note how neat the ballast is. This is a 484 Northern type. Hidden in the weeds, a track will lead to the southeastern branch. The old stony bar just after the fire that destroyed most of it in 2008. Note marking the southeastern railroad branch in the road. This short branch went up to the East Car and Construction Company near where Route 78 passes today. The line was torn up sometime in the 1980s. It's the launch of the new canal boat in 1993. The former Lehigh Valley River was in the foreground. At this time it is Conrail. Canal boat rides are available most of the summer. The canal museum will be built nearby. The new canal museum under construction in 2005. Look carefully. A Norfolk Southern is passing in the rear. The Canal Museum has many fine exhibits of a canal artifact in the Lehigh River Valley. This exhibit is featured in the Canal Museum. It shows the anthracite railroads, and this one was built by the Nather Society of Model Engineers. It was on exhibit in 2020. Martha Fox's new book did a big bang up job with her new publication. It's 1959 at the Route 611 curve around Mount Ida in Eastern PA, long before a canal museum was ever conceived. The first museum will be built just to the right of the photo decades later. The original canal museum was 611 next to Mount Ida in Eastern PA. This 1959 Chevy Impala has a habit of getting in a lot of my pictures. Photo taken in November 1992. Just above the Canal Museum in the Mount Ida Rock Cut, a Portland-bound coal train is crossing over three pre-Conrail anthracite railroads, coming off the Lehigh Valley, crossing over the Central New Jersey Main Line, and onto the Lehigh Hudson Delaware River Bridge in 1982. The Lehigh Valley Station platform is in the background just before demolition. A view in 1900 looking west over the Lehigh Canal. Chain Dam and Charlie Bridge to the Island Park. The Valley tracks are obscured by the camera and angle. A trolley on the bridge on the eastern section of Island Park. For a nickel, you could ride the trolley from the center square east into the park, about four to five miles. The park operated from about 1900 to the early 1920s. The aerial I took in 1977, looking west, shows the features of the area. Lehigh and Susquehanna Division of the Jersey Central tracks on the north side of the park about 1900. No rails are sparked directly to the ties, no tie plates. Boat launches at left on Island Park in the distance. The boat launch on the north side of Island Park. Horse ride and Ferris wheel. 
Looks like the casino has a proper spot for plays. Like most parks, lots of rides. No lack of eating pavilions either. No large lamp for night lighting. A postcard view of the roller coaster. A black diamond express. I see no coal in tender. This is probably an alcohol fired train. Looking east about 1895 on Lehigh Valley Railroad. The smelling furnaces are just off Island Park Road. Looking west off Island Park Dirt Road. No ore cars at the furnaces. A Portland bound coal train passing the canal lock near the chain dam in 1990. The lock tender's house is in the background. Part of the Hugh Moore Park today. It's June 1965 and I'm walking across the train dam to the north side where the ice dam of 64-65 broke through the dam. River level dropped a good 25 feet, but the dam was rebuilt in 1973. Island Park was no longer an island in those eight years. January 1973, eight years after the ice jam and repairs are well underway. The new concrete dam is half finished. The dam at Easton was replaced in 1968 using the same method. An eastbound Lehigh Freight is passing the lock tender's house in 1973. The Donkey Bridge from Island Park in 1900. This is how mules were transferred to the north side. A chain was once placed in the river to keep boats from going over the dam. West side of Island Park. Mule trail to the north side. A postcard view of Richard's Yard just south of Island Park. Looking west, 1900. Looking east from the yard in 1970, shortly before abandonment. When the central New Jersey abandoned all lines in Pennsylvania in the early 70s, the Lehigh Valley took over the yard in Allentown and abandoned Richard's Yard. By the time of the Conrail takeover in 1976, Richard's Yard was completely gone. In our next video, we're going to look at Lehigh Valley's eastern and northern branch and the industries it served. And a few other items if I can dig up any more pictures. <laughs>